I am Dr. Ashok Kumar Sinha, uh, retired as a director, Ali Avarjang, National Institute of Speech and Hearing Disability in Mumbai. That's a Government of India Institute, Ministry of uh, Social Justice and Empo uh, Ministry of uh, Social Justice and Empowerment, Department of Empowerment of Person with Disability. It's almost uh, 44 year, uh, 44 years have gone in this field. Childhood was spent in all Air Force Station, whether it was in Kanpur or Allahabad or New Delhi or Devlali. Devlali is a place near Nasik in Maharashtra. And uh, I really enjoyed my childhood because we were studying in uh, Kendri Vidyali. And even if you have a transfer in between, so you go back to the same school, same textbook, same uniform, so no issue and people from all over India. That was something which I cherish. Like for example, it was so interesting that when I went to Mysore for higher study, people didn't like Idli when they come from North and I was eat, over eating Idlis. They said, how do you do that? Actually, that was from Air Force. Like in Air Force, you have people from all over India you go there, you take their language, you take their culture, you take their food, and it is enjoyable. So my childhood was lovely. And I especially feel uh, stay in my Devlali. Devlali is almost like a hill station. Uh, wonderful people there. A lot of grapes garden, Goa garden. And we used to enjoy, like a school, children in uniform, if you go to garden, they will simply give you plenty of fruits to eat. They will even ask you go and pluck your fruits, whichever you want. So something like that we enjoyed. And being closer to Mumbai, we had an additional advantage. As a young children, there used to be a lot of cinema shootings. So we will run away from school, <laughs> go and see the cinema shooting. And uh, sometime our principal will call the actors and actors to school also so that we can have some assembly, sing a one or two song and uh, then get along. So it was wonderful stay in uh, in the Vidyalaya. I was also in National Cadet Crop, uh, given commissioned as a corporal. So it was always interesting to be leading the parade and all. So it all went uh, really well for my uh, childhood. Once I finished school or before finishing school, as usual, every parents, every children will look where you want to get admission. During that time, the most important one was either go for a medical or engineering. You know, there was no third course as such in anybody's mind, including mine. My father was also interested that he should go for a higher study, either in engineering or medical, wherever he gets in. And believe me, I happened to visit library very often, which was very unusual of a youngster going to library. In library, I saw a newspaper, a small cutting there in the English uh, newspaper, admission to All India Institute of Speech and Hearing. So when I saw All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, one cannot understand anything about it. Saw the logo, that was also interesting somebody playing flute or something, something like that. So I said, what it could be, but the degree attracted, it called BSc Speech and Hearing. I said, well, BSc is an own degree. So it is Speech and Hearing, so we do not know what exactly. Somehow I just applied. I just applied without making any thing like that. And uh, one day when I returned home, my father, gave me a telegram. The telegram says that you have been selected. I said, where? He says, you are selected in All India Institute of Speech and Hearing because he also didn't know. So he has to read the uh, whole. I said, uh, where is this? He said, huh? you don't know. I said, no, I don't know. Then he said, no, no, there is an admission. That means you must have applied. Then I remembered, oh, yes, I did apply. 
I did apply. Then he said, uh, this institute is in Mysore. I said, where is Mysore? So at that time, we only knew India and South India. Madras was the more popular. He said, no, no, it is near Bangalore. I said, where is Bangalore? And where is Bangalore? So, but because he worked in uh, Air Force, he has also a brief period of working in Bangalore. So he knew all the routes now. So he said, you want to go? I said, yes, I'd like to see the institute and uh, uh, see. And if I don't feel, okay, I'll be back. He said, no issue, you go. Then my mother said no, my, to ask my father that you also accompany. He said, no, no, he is fit, he will go. I will just tell him all the routes and all. Gave me little extra money also. And that was real motivation <laughs> to go to a new place. Took a train, traveled for almost three days, reached Mysore, and this was shivering. I was shivering. It was, I think, uh, May or June, May, I think May, but it was, I was shivering because it was so cold there. And uh, in North, it is so hot. Uh, somehow, the first thing I enjoyed was the lovely trees all around the way to the institute. There was an auto person. I asked him, I want to go to All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, Manas Gangotri. He said something which I now know he said Putkodi. <laughs> so I just sat. He brought me to a place and said, sir, this is the place. And I paid him 3 rupees 25 pesa. Oh, wow. Only 3 rupees 25 pesa. And uh, saw the institute, took admission. And the person who uh, gave me admission, I don't remember the name now. He gave me a key. He said, room number 18, go there. So I went there, saw the hostel. No one was there because I think by the time it was 11 o'clock. So most of them must have come to the institute and uh, had a smell coming from canteen, miss. So I went there. So there was a person, he said, oh, you come like that. I said, yes, yes. So I said, you want to eat something? He says, so he gave me the first tindi or the breakfast that BC Badeva. I loved it. He was surprised that how this person coming from the other place is enjoying this because I have already eaten that kind of thing food at home also, but not regularly, occasionally. Around one o'clock, there was a lot of noise. Then I knew that, oh, I think it is a lunch time, so all students must have. I still remember the first one who knocked my door and said, come for food, was our senior, great person, lovely person, Babul Basu. He was quite elderly in terms of student also. Probably he has come after the graduation or so. And that's the interaction started. So went to college, uh, lovely college, small batch of student. We were hardly 18 or 20 students in a class. And uh, it was only BSc or MSc at that time. So not many students and uh, more than 50% girls. And we had four or five people from North, rest from uh, this, and started uh, seeing that what exactly it is. It did give me an interest initially. And uh, after some time, it also gave me an interest that they were playing a game which we have never played in our uh, school life. And uh, it was ball badminton. Badminton we have played, but not with the ball. And that was something which was really interesting. Like if you hit the shuttlecock, it needs a lot of force. But if you hit the ball with the same force, it will go three ways up. So that we enjoyed and slowly uh, became this one. English has not been so good. And there, everybody spoke English. Senior, juniors, teachers. So initially, it was a little difficult, but then picked up. I still remember Dr. 
Ratna's first class. With his uh, heavy voice, uh, he said, uh, I don't know. Then I said, if you don't know, then how do we know? <laughs> but now I know what he said is, I don't know. You makes you to know. So that way, his uh, initial classes were very motivating. And uh, we had lovely group of our uh, classmates, uh, whether it is uh, Ravi Shankar or it was uh, Subarao or uh, Malini Indrani, uh, Sunil Kumar Sood, a boy from Delhi, a uh, boy from Bihar also uh, was there. So lovely classmates were there. Seniors were also too good. They were trying to tell us. They were trying to help us in teaching. They were also trying to help us in studying and playing also. So that was something very important. So with this involvement, a really conducive environment of a college, which you don't see almost in the north part at that part of time, probably I got retained back at my school. And then started working, teaching. At that time, telephones were not there. So we have to write a letter to my parents saying that I am interested and this is what it happens uh, here and looks very encouraging, looks very encouraging. Uh, so my father said that, okay, you go ahead and uh, read well, enjoy and whatever money you want, tell us, we will give. So it all worked well and the real teachers, if you remember Dr. Ratna, Dr. Nikam, uh, Dr. Nataraja, Dr. Bhartraj, Dr. Bhavani, Dr. Pandale, uh, P.D. Manohar sir, and later when we were in the uh, MSc, uh, Dr. Dayalan Samuel, P.J. Kumar Gowda, Dr. Purushottama, they were all wonderful teachers we had and very encouraging uh, things which went. Important thing happened in my life during this day was I joined All India Institute of Speech and Hearing Mysore in 76. In second year, when I was in second year, pursuing my second year, I got a message that my father got stroke oh. and lost his uh, speech. And uh, I still remember that we have observed such cases in clinic, but I think aphasia was in uh, third year or so, so not read much. So I still remember that I talked to my teachers uh, about all this. At that time, they explained me that how to do at home, whatever you do. I came back from uh, institute, uh, stayed with my parents, for more than 20 days and that really made me to explain to my mother that how one has to talk with my father and how therapy part can be taken up and uh, because at that time speech therapy was unknown even in Patta, uh, very much unknown. Believe me, I stayed for 15 days, did whatever I know and asked my mother to go ahead with this kind of thing, my elder sister also. And it made a tremendous improvement, not in 15 days when I left back, but they followed it up. Wow. And within six months, Maybe I didn't know that it was a spontaneous recovery or whatever. He had almost normal speech and language. And that really made me a prestigious person in my family. That's something which I said, Ari Bapre, he has become a big doctor for us. But actually, a little knowledge, little this. And I still remember and I still continue to practice that any stroke patient, I say, follow two things only. One, give him a good diet, balanced diet. And second, make the environment conducive for him to understand 
and speak. That's all. Not much is involved. You this. Sometimes even if he says something, nod your head saying that yes, you understood. So something like this, and this really helps. That really helps. So that made me a real change in terms of uh, the field, and I got now I became more stronger in the field. The first year was not much. Uh, this one did not do well in studies also. But then I realized that 50% student will only go to post graduation because seats were only 10 at that time. And we were 20. So you got to be in first 10 for that you have to read. And I think I did that and uh, definitely passed uh, BSc speech editing in first division, like what I did in school. And later uh, got into a post graduation. So without any break, so I was within, well within the rank so that no waiting list for me. So I got back. When I came back for my post-graduation, uh, there was some, uh, our own classmate who were almost sure of seat. They did not get the seat. Uh, but then later on, they also got into and uh, for post-graduation, as usual, now you know that you have already become an audiologist and speech language pathology. So post-graduation is little easy, but uh, learned a lot. My project work was under Dr. Nikam, uh, a tough one as a teacher, but enjoyed. It was a technical specification for emittance audiometer at that time. And uh, my dissertation guide was Dr. Dalen Samuel. And I did on the effect of linguistic experience on word discrimination score. And uh, post graduation also, I passed in first division. So it was uh, really wonderful to be at Mysore. And I really feel that if I have to say my golden period of my life, I will say my stay in Mysore for five years, pursuing my graduation and post-graduation. Uh, there was a conference in Chandigarh. I think it was in 81. Uh, from there, we went to Shimla for a tour also enjoyed the trip and when we came back suddenly we saw an advertisement of post of speech therapist and one post for audiometry technician at uh, HP Medical College Shimla. So I thought I can apply because we still have uh, three four months to go for our uh, exam so and the post was for uh, graduation only so I also applied. Some of my classmates also applied and some other people also applied. Went there because I know now Shimla, I knew. So I went there and uh, the medical college principal, it was a state government job. So they said, uh, you want for automated technician? I said, no. So why? So we are giving you a good salary. I said, the post is automated technician. I am not technician. I am a graduate. I am going to be a postgraduate within a two, three months. So what does it mean? They said, I said, it means like technician means they are diploma holder or whatever, not as I have read. And my work is also not something like that. So they said, uh, so you will not take this post? I said, no. So what do you want? I said, give me whatever designation you want, remove this technician. Then they say, okay, we will give you speech therapist, but you have to do the work of audio also. I said, no issue, no issue. Probably that was my first time I learned a skill to negotiate with the management. <laughs> I, I thought as a, as a youngster of 21 year, with the principal of the medical college, how do you say, and they agreed, they agreed. So even the head of department, uh, ENT, Dr. R.K. Saxena, afterward he said that uh, all of us were impressed when you talked about and why you said the technician, you, you are not the technician. So principal also agreed and uh, we have given you speech therapist post. And uh, results were declared. 
uh, within uh, 15 days and i was so happy probably the first one to get a job in my class before we appear for the exam so i informed my parents they were also happy that oh before you complete your degree you have a job and that too a state government job uh, so once i finished my exam came home at patna stayed here for 10 days or so and then joined the uh, hp medical college shimla believe me that was a wonderful time when the first time you go for a job and get your first salary and that too in a place like shimla <laughs> where you can really enjoy uh, things the ent department at shimla i learned a lot the ent doctors were too good i still remember that one of the doctors saying asking me that suppose your sound treated room is a vacuum how will you test the hearing this was the question asked by one of the uh, assistant professor of the uh, ent i said sir i think you are joking with me if you have a vacuum how do i survive to test and how the person who gets in maybe you will survive to get in and then sound will never travel in vacuum so how do you test so this kind of thing which they are looking forward and uh, next day i got a official order that you will be taking a class of mbbs final year i said oh mbbs final year in medical college and it was a hilly station no so the ent department is on one hill and the classes are in another hill so you have to walk for half an hour or so so first time when i went there so my hod introduced me i saw a batch of 150 students in front of me in white coat we were used to class of 20 and here you have 150 students and that too all built up with the mbba students are more stronger type started my class and continued for one hour continued for one hour and uh, when i came out of the class there was a doctor standing outside he said who are you I had no way to answer him that who I am. I am not a lecturer. I am not a professor. I am, I am simply said, sir, I am audiologist and speech pathologist. That time language was not that common word. So what is this? Then I explained him for another one hour. By that time, my HOD wanted me for some work. He said, what is he doing? We have sent him for one hour. It's more than two hours. He has not come. So he sent a phone to look after it. Then the peon came, he said, sir is calling you. I said, uh, and that peon did namaskar to this person also. He was head of department psychiatry. So he said, oh, you have taken a class. And I was observing that within one hour, there was no noise in the class. Everybody was listening to you. So it is important to know who you are. And then he said, OK, we finished the day today and we'll celebrate today. So we had a wonderful salary, almost four times of what I was getting in Shimla. So it was a really surprising that how the ENT doctor offered me a, such a high salary. And then I realized that even if you are in a government as a lecturer, you will get lesser than what I was going to get. So I immediately jumped to New Delhi and joined that uh, hospital and their first experience of getting into a ENT setup because it was hospital come his operation theater and everywhere everything within the campus so now he started taking it was a ENT hospital. theater when and that ENT hospital uh, offered me um, tympanoplasty is being done and there i realized that what we study with diagram this is tympanic membrane, that's a step here, sir. This is this. And what you see exactly in the ear are two different things. And you will able to appreciate 
that what exactly, if you see what is happening inside and then realize that how you will be. And probably there, I developed the skill of interpretation of audiogram much more appropriately than anything. And that has really given me that if you see things in the year during the operation table or something like that, that gives you a much more understanding of what you read with the pictures. So that gave me an opportunity. That gave me an opportunity to work for higher strata of the society because his fees was very high. At that point of time in 82 or 83, his hearing evaluation was 1000 rupees at that time. So therapy was also very high. And so we got to come up with that standard. So foreigners will come for therapy. I still remember that American child was for speech therapy and I said, it is giraffe. She said, no, it is not giraffe. It's a giraffe. I said, Ari Bapri, I cannot match to this kind of thing. But it was a lot of learning and uh, started working on uh, to that part, which was very uh, great in a sense that you get a uh, lot of knowledge when you work with an ENT doctor. And the doctor, like in uh, Shimla, and in New Delhi, I never had kind of feeling that ENT doctors are ENT. They are like a subordinate, I mean, sorry, like a colleague. They are like a colleague. And due respect was given to audiologists. And I'm sure the audiologist like me also gave him the due respect as an ENT specialist. So my first job in medical college, second job in ENT hospital, that... Uh, was a great time and with a good salary during that time enjoying the life at new delhi and uh, during this period uh, there was a marriage proposal of mine and i didn't have like uh, you know marriages in bihar is generally settled by the parents so they settled my marriage uh, um, about that and uh, I got married in 1983 and uh, my father-in-law was also an uh, engineering service of state government so he started uh, motivating me that though you are getting a good salary but government jobs are always good and uh, as a young son-in-law you have to listen to father-in-law and that was supported by his daughter also that is my wife <laughs> So I said, okay, we will look forward. If there is an opportunity coming, we will move on to a government job also. Uh, no issue. And uh, very soon, I got into a project of Government of India, Ministry of Welfare. And uh, I got into a district hospital again. District hospital. And that was a group A post of West... Uh, West Bengal and uh, happened to join there in uh, West Bengal. But then the job requirement was just opposite to what I was doing in Delhi. And I really worked hard. Now, first was in the AC rooms and now here in a dusty environment of uh, village. But enjoyed equally. That is something which I really cherish with the help of UNICEF. Uh, we set up the uh, speech and hearing unit in the district hospital and uh, provided uh, hearing services in rural India. Good experience were there. Once we went to a village for a camp and surprisingly, there was nobody in that village. So everybody has gone to some mela where they will have a local <laughs> something and all of them are happy with their <laughs> So they don't want to come to the camp for hearing testing. So that experience was also there. And uh, it was a project from the central ministry. So our giant secretary used to visit the rural area. And he was very happy. In one of the functions where we were distributing the body-worn hearing aid under the Government of India scheme, 
he asked me to come on stage he said you are the right person to fit the hearing aid why should i distribute generally officer will not do like that officer will always have been limelight and uh, first time probably i went on to the stage and uh, he asked me to speak to the people also and just give for 5 minutes or 10 minutes speech so probably that was my first time of getting into the speech of course the skill learned is from all india student of speech and hearing mysore only as i was in the association elections also got sports secretary elected twice in mysore and i was also hostel secretary so little bit of speech giving was learned there so that uh, helped me to get into stage work there and he as a joint secretary of uh, at that time ali abba jung national institute of hearing uh, handicap he asked that you can shift to you know, national institute so in 1987 i joined the national institute Why read? I have no earthly idea. Life is not a genre. Why should a book be? A heartfelt and bittersweet romance. S. K. Rather Krishnan's "I Have No Earthly Idea" will make you rejoice and grieve with its earnest, charming hero, and leave you with a lingering smile. A novel filled with characters from professions seldom portrayed in novels and movies, such as physician assistants, physical therapists, speech pathologists, and occupational therapists. captures a sense of realism and adds authenticity to this romance in the medical setting it is a captivating read and will keep you engaged and will broaden your cultural perspective it will open your mind to love romance comedy heartbreak and diversity sk rather krishnan does an excellent job in highlighting how cross cultural semantics play into our daily lives this is a must read Grab yourself a copy today and find out more. In 1987 an opportunity came so I joined the Aliyabha National Institute for Hearing Handicap. at that time again was lucky to have dr n ratna as our director in the institute so when as a student he was there now as a staff also he was there at our mumbai office and he encouraged me to expand the services of speech and hearing in eastern india the first time a project was sanctioned for construction of automatic test room and with the help of dr m n nagaraja because he was quite a lot uh, known with the construction and i took the help of all india radio engineers to get into acoustication purpose and made the first automatic room probably in the uh, eastern india in the institute i still remember that the budget sanction was little less than the expenditure and dr ratna was as a director he simply sanctioned the additional budget after seeing that how beautiful the room has come up and uh, at that point of time when i thought ki we have made the automatic room so why not present in isha that how automatic rooms can be constructed by the audiologist rather than by the engineers so i still remember that uh, probably it was in 94 95 where uh, the first uh, uh, chandigarh conference i presented the uh, powerpoint it was not powerpoint at that time slides one has to insert that kind of slides uh, for automatic construction there we didn't have clinical services in kolkata and dr ratna allowed me to start clinical services also uh, as i was mentioning that it was interesting when i went and joined the kolkata regional center i was told that you are the head of the office i said uh, how come 
then uh, if you remember dr rajendra call he is in america now is a big name he said sir i am the clinical assistant and you are the lecturer so you are senior to me i said you are already working here he said no 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 by virtue of uh, group a you are the senior uh, senior person i said okay so we started with the clinical services and then it was a hand building of national institute for orthopedic handicap so i asked my director that why can't we have our own building and by the time uh, dr ratna has gone back to mysore and uh, mrs rekha roy joined as the director she was also from kolkata so i had a little better approach and known to her so we made a new building construction approval at kolkata the first regional center to have its own building there in 1989 dr satendra kumar he is also right now in america he was deputed to uk under fulbright scheme and to take his place i was transferred to our kolkata new delhi regional center he said no no you go there and replace him and uh, because he is will be uh, on deputation for one year i said no issue for me all jobs taking away you know so i moved my family also family means i had only one son very small so he was not even going to school so it was easy and uh, delhi is always place for me where i keep coming like i spent my childhood also in delhi then i worked as a worked also in uh, ent hospital in delhi so again going back to delhi was no issue so went there there i realized that i was given a additional responsibility to deal with the ministry officials of the institute work so first time i got the experience that how to go to ministry how to get the work of the ministry that was also an important one and the regional centers came meanwhile we have already applied for uh, bachelor of education in hearing handicap in kolkata after one year dr satendra kumar was coming back and then they said we are going to have a bed uh, opening in kolkata so now you go back to kolkata uh, i said okay meanwhile my wife also took an admission in diploma in communication disorder in delhi and she was allowed to appear in exam from kolkata so we came back to kolkata and uh, started uh, first post graduation course of uh, bed hh in kolkata that was in uh, 89 or so during this period we started the first time the bachelor of audiology and speech language pathology course in eastern india the first ever course with the calcutta university affiliation i still remember that it was 9th of august uh, we got the inauguration of the course the then director mrs rekha roy uh, celebrated 9th august on 8th only in mumbai and came to kolkata uh, for uh, uh, inaugural of a bslp course with a 10 student in the first batch mm-hmm. and uh, i am very happy the present isha secretary is also one of the our first batch student indril chatterjee so he is there uh, starting bslp course in a new building it really changed the regional center look that with bslp you have more patient coming in more students getting in more uh, type of uh, presentation research coming in it all started during that period one day i happened to see a patient who was a uh, very high official in lic uh, sardar ji using turban he got uh, acoustic neuroma in one year and after the operation lost the whole hearing it was profound loss in that year the other year was normal as usual he came to our institute and uh, he got the checkup and after the checkup usually we say with a single sided deafness that well we cannot do anything uh, lucky that you have one uh, year where you can able to hear then uh, my peer said that one patient want to see you and i you always feel that patient want to see me for uh, mostly one reason that there is some complaint 
somebody has not done something. So I said, please send him. So he came, he talked to me and he said about his problem. And I also agreed that what have been, have been uh, told to him. Then he made a statement that look, I thought that you people are little different than the others. Therefore, I came for the services, but you are no way anything different than the others. He was from Bhuneshwar. And he said, thank you and uh, started leaving my office. Rather, he left my room also. Something came to my mind. And I immediately went out and asked him to come. I said, you please sit. And we didn't talk for almost 10 to 15 minutes. Then he said, what do you want me to do? I said, just I'm thinking something. We were in a campus of uh, National Institute of Orthopedic Handicap. So I knew some doctors. And there is a hospital center. So I rang up my friend. I said, I want a saline tube. He said, what has happened? I said, no, no I just want a tube. Maybe 4 inch, 5 inch or 6 inch or 8 inch tube I want. So I sent a person, got the tube. I had one VT hearing aid. VT hearing aid, the tube, which was almost one inch or so, I put an eight inches tube and asked him to take out his turban and place that hearing aid in the poorer ear and tube in the better ear and asked him to wear the turban, to hold the tube. And then, you know what response came? He said, look, I'm hearing in my poorer ear now. <laughs> this is something great. And he said that you give me this only. At that time, we were not able to give BT hearing aid because it is not under edit. So I so said, I cannot give you this hearing aid. But what I thought is something which you feel. He said, no, no, this is a wonderful way. Wonderful way. And because he is using turban, so no issue. From there, I got the interest in working on the cost-effective cross hearing aid and uh, tested on some patient and presented in Isha in 2000. I still remember the chairperson was Dr. Asha Yatiraj. So she said, show me your product. So I gave her. She was our uh, junior also. So we had a very known uh, thing. And uh, when awards were announced, my name was also announced. I was so happy to guest first best paper award in Isha for the cross hearing aid. Uh, from there, the journey of cross hearing aid started. By the time Dr. M. N. Nagaraja became the in charge director of our institute after uh, Mrs. Rekha Roy superannuation, he said that once you have got the best paper award, why don't you take a uh, research project in a bigger way and do something for single-sided deafness. I said, yes, it is something important. And uh, he was the one who encouraged and sanctioned the research project for uh, starting the work in the cross hearing aid. And the first time we could able to now make uh, the modification in VT locally and uh, started prescribing and uh, issuing to the, our patient under the research project. So more than 70 patients have been fitted and it was a tremendous response coming in. And first time I also had an experience to work with the research assistant of my own student who were there. So they were very helpful. My colleagues were very helpful. And uh, it all went well. One day a person came with a single sided deafness and uh, when we were issuing, we used to issue for uh, those who have a lower income. But uh, then my colleague said, sir, can we give this person a hearing aid? I said, what is his income? He says, sir, don't ask. Because he himself has declared some 10 lakh rupees per month or so. So what, who is this person with such a high income? Then he was an engineer in America. He was from Kolkata, but working in uh, as an engineer in America. So I said, look, we cannot give you this hearing aid. But during your stay in Kolkata, use this. And while going, please return this. 
he said uh, if i don't return i said no i have a trust of you so you use this so he has taken this yes. after 10 days or so he came to return that hearing aid that now i'm going along with his wife so i asked his wife how was he feeling is it no wonderful very very nice but only problem is that there is a cord connecting the two ears which was rounded through the neck that cord is not a good one so make it cordless i said okay good idea and an idea came to me that can't we convert or remove the cord and have t coil mm. so the present t coil in vt is very small and that did not work so we went to a motor winding person and gave him a wire and asked him to wind it triple the size of what it is he did it without any money and when we used this t coil so it became like a microphone amplifier and t coil at one point the other point t coil amplifier and speaker that worked that worked and it was wonderful but only thing is you got to have two hearing aid instead of one hearing aid so cost became double this also i presented in isha and again i got the best paper award uh -huh. dr pallika arjun was the chairperson so wonderful and uh, then by the time dr rangasai joined as the director he encouraged me to apply for national award for this product so i applied so the product went there there was a evaluation by team of uh, iit engineers and other experts uh, and these awards uh, the national awards are given on the international day for disability that is 3rd of uh, december one day a fax message started coming in which was not ending some 30 pages fax that too it is coming like a radiogram from police ah. so my peers said sir what is this coming this is unending 30 pages and then i we saw that it was realized that i have been nominated for national award so that oh. all documents have come <laughs> so it was a great pleasure to receive a national award and that too from the hands of uh, dr abdul ji kalam ji it was wonderful when he came, he uh, saw the uh, BT hearing aid in cross version and uh, I demonstrated to him. He was very happy and he asked me one question which I didn't have the answer. You know what he asked? Did you weigh the hearing aid which you have made after modification? I said, no, sir. Why? You must see that weight has been added by in wire and that wire man adds how much of it he, it's negligible but still you should know i said i will do so he was so happy and he said no no you carry on your work and it was a real pleasure and probably the one of the golden moment of my life to receive that national award and i'm sure my colleagues my director everybody was very happy and uh, it was in 2002 Working with Ali Yavachang National Institute for the Hearing Handicap Kolkata as assistant director. He has developed a cost-effective model of contralateral routing of signal cross hearing aid. Contralateral routing of signals has been achieved using indigenous technology with low gain behind the ear hearing aid. This model cost about rupees 3000, which is much cheaper than other products in FM model and quad model that are presently available. Sri Ashok Kumar Sinha, Regional Center of NIHH, Kolkata, West Bengal. So it went uh, very well, and we still continue the single-sided deafness project in our national institute in regional centers and lot many people have been helped during this time because now i got the award also so a little bit of prestigious part the institute allowed me to start master degree in audiology and speech language pathology that was a wonderful time uh, we uh, started with master 
and once master starts in any institute the again the dynamics of the institute changes very well especially with the now you have more hands to work you have more people to have a research decision lot of presentation now students working on in a various uh, part dissertation coming in so it changed the scenario of our uh, regional center kolkata in 2005 an opportunity of course this opportunity was given by suman only he joined our institute and he said sir there is a project something called special olympic you like to join i said what is this it is about healthy hearing i said well, anything to do with hearing i am little more interested i immediately took on and the first time i got the training as a clinical director in nagano japan and did the uh, hearing screening of more than 1000 athletes it was great pleasure to work with dr gilbert hurt dr judy montgomery and they were very surprised that how in india as an audiologist we also know about ear molds like probably you you are in america so probably the audiologist only will prescribe the ear molds are different people so gilbert her was also using a hearing aid and uh, sometime he will say oh, i am not able to hear so you have got to repeat he had uh, two pairs of hearing aid so one day i said sir will you give me a chance to manipulate your hearing through this hearing aid is so what do you mean he was using a hearing aid with a blocked ear mold i said i want to make a small hole in this ear mold so why he said you will see it was basically a venting so i made a hole in his mold and after that he said yes it makes a lot of difference it makes a lot of difference so that was something which we said and then our uh, interaction increased and then i said that look the data here for the hearing screening of uh, so many athletes i would like to make a paper out of it i said yes yes go ahead and uh, he was also a co-author with me and uh, again this work was presented in isha in uh, it was i think 2006 uh, 6 or 7 and uh, there also i got best paper award oh, wow. and dr abhin nagaraj was the chairperson i said so my colleagues used to say sir what you do every time you present you get award and we have been presenting and we are not getting award <laughs> and that paper was published in international journal of audiology also so it was a pleasure to work in that and uh, that special olympic till today also i am cherishing it very recently we did a program in puducherry in india uh, and uh, we did a lot of training program also and one training program i was called to train and that to in america in miami okay. i said well this is an opportunity for me uh, to train the other people also in terms of uh, hearing screening so it was a special olympic has given me a lot of uh, uh places to visit and most importantly it has also given me the vision for intellectual disability that how if they are trained they are like one of us only which is missing in india which is missing in india but now special olympic in india has also taken place it is going on all these things a research project special olympic makes my life very uh, joy enjoyable i can say and with my all the colleagues uh, helping me uh, working out uh, will always always been uh, encouraging me and one day during the dr rangasai as a director i got a order rather to move on to shrinagar i said where in shrinagar shrinagar is not a easy place so there was a composite regional center for person with disability and they said no no you go there and deputation as a director there i said oh that's a good opportunity my colleague said sir don't go with, with all the problems of shrinagar i said no 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 if it is problem no problem but i'll go i went there now this was an area 
where I am not supposed to work only for speech and hearing disability, but I am supposed to work for all other disability, uh, including visual, orthopedic, um, intellectual disability, and all. So that gave me a real vision to understand the other disability. And it also gave me an opportunity to meet the experts of other disability. And uh, we worked very hard for Srinagar. There also a challenging task was to take up the new building and make it functional, uh, get the audit of the Srinagar done because Srinagar was always a priority in a sense. Uh, did there, enjoyed, went to rural area. Even though my colleagues will say that don't go to villages, don't go to rural area, people will kidnap. So I said, no issue. While traveling in the field, they used to take uh, tea in a hot spot, kawa they call it. So you stop there, go there, drink tea with them and come back. So no issue. When we are doing the camp, we will go to the religious place, meet the religious leader and tell them to ask people to come for camp, take the services, they will all come. So it was also a great thing. When I worked in Srinagar as a um, director, it was in 2003. Again, came back to Kolkata after my deputation, back to Kolkata and continued the work for master dissertation, BSLP. And there we have had the uh, open uh, schooling also started with the beard in an open university. So that was also, and that was in the local language, that is Bengali. Then came an opportunity for deputation as a member secretary RCI, again applied. <laughs> So exploring all the new possibility and uh, I got selected, probably the first member secretary with the audiologist and speech language pathology background, even the CRC director with the audiologist and speech language pathologist background and uh, joined the RCI. RCI is a a regulatory body in India for all the rehabilitation courses uh, and the professional registration. So when I joined the RCI in New Delhi, again, New Delhi is my pet place, so I don't have any problem. Uh, again, shifted my uh, family also. And by the time my both children have gone to college, uh, they were in hostel, so I don't have any problem of school education. They all, the, both of them studied from Kendriya Vidyalaya, so never had a problem for transfer also. So in uh, uh, Rehabilitation Council of India, did quite a lot of changes as such, like a CRE program were based on that you go and attend CRE. But there were some seniors, they also said, we don't go to attend CRE, rather we go to take lecture in CRE program. I said, even if you take a lecture, you will get the credit point. If you publish a paper nationally, you will get the credit point. If you publish a paper internationally, you will get a credit point. If you go for an awareness program and give a speech of half an hour or 15 minutes, then also you will get the credit point. So that people can earn 100 points in a span of five years for renewal of their registration. So that was something which is uh, helped, which helped me also. Like uh, for, I didn't do any CRE program. I have already taken classes, but um, just published uh, three paper internationally, you get 90 points, 30 points each. So no issue. So RCI was uh, a place where I worked as a member secretary and uh, almost chaired all the committees in different disability. So that again gave me, and the CRC work helped me to perform well in uh, RCI also. And I really appreciate that some of our teachers were also appreciating my work in RCI, especially Dr. Edwin Raja sir. And he always wanted me to go back to RCI rather than to work in the national issue. It was a deputation period. So after completion, I came back uh, again to Kolkata. Uh, that was in 2008. Uh, 2008, uh, uh, it became. And uh, in 2000. Uh, eight, we are now having the MSc program, BSLP program, B8. Then I thought we will add up another program in Kolkata that was MED education in hearing handicap. Uh, 
that was again the first in eastern india only our institute at headquarter was conducting emed and then we started emed in kolkata so like every time you have something new coming up in kolkata so that keeps me also fresh and my colleagues also on toes that sir will also would like to do something new and new so it went in kolkata i must share with you we started a program of computer training for the persons with deafness for the deaf people computer training way back in 96 or 97 or 98 at that time computers were quite new quite new in india and today it is one of the successful program of the kolkata center where many of the deaf people who have uh, completed their computer training program and in one of the university uh, there are 15 people deaf people working in a result section confidential section so that is also a great achievement for kolkata and uh, while working on that uh, then dr rangasai also superannuated and then as usual everybody will apply for the post of director <clears throat> i also applied and uh, the first question you asked me who are you uh-huh. that is the same question asked me by the then secretary who, who was the uh, head of the uh, interview board uh, who are you and when i started telling who i am it became more than half an hour they said can't you stop now so my answer was that i still have something more to tell they said no no we have learned enough so when the results were declared let us do something different and the first time we brought dt hearing gate that is digital model under the government of india scheme of edip it said that why can't we make a guinness book of world record of fitting a bt hearing aid in a one day and that too on the occasion of a birthday of honorable prime minister i said if i have to change one thing in of the institute i will change the name of the institute 